So good evening, everyone, and welcome to our teaching about how to testify at the upcoming hearings uh, for Con Ed's rate increases. So my name is Jasmine Graham. I use she and they pronouns. I'm the Energy Justice Policy Manager at We Act for Environmental Justice. Um, joined by my colleagues Bailey and Charles, both members of our organizing team, as well as the folks at Sane Energy Project, uh, Kim and Lee, who will be giving a fabulous presentation today. We also have some folks joining us from Pulp, the Public Utility Law Project, who is a great resource to go to if you're struggling with utility debt or uh, high rates. And we are also joined by our friends over at Alliance for a Green Economy, also known as Agree. So today we're gonna talk about uh, the Con Ed rate hikes. Uh, first up, how does Con Ed get to raise our rates? Um, after that, we're gonna look at what is Con Ed proposing? What's wrong with what they're proposing? What are our solutions? What are we gonna do about it? And how to testify at a hearing. So um, I'm gonna kick it off to Kim and I will say that there will be a Q&A at the end. And we also have a press conference going on tomorrow at 10 a.m., which we'll tell you about at the end of the session and you're all more than welcome to attend. So now I will pass it over to Kim to get us started. Cool, I'm just gonna play a little video for us to kick us off. In the 1800s, New York City used to light our streets with gas lanterns. As the population grew, so did the amount of companies looking to corner the market. And since there was no regulation, they actually used to battle for customers in turf in the streets of Manhattan. These were called the gas house gangs. The invention of the incandescent bulb changed everything. Gas and electricity supplies went head to head in competition. To make sense of a growing and complex grid, utilities were granted monopoly status in order to streamline energy delivery and to prevent the grid from having dueling companies with double, triple, quadruple infrastructure. What a mess that would be. In exchange for being entrusted with special monopoly status, each utility company operating in every region of New York is regulated. In the majority of New York, they are regulated by the Public Service Commission. And in Rockaway, Queens, and Long Island, they are regulated by the Long Island Power Authority. So for the most part, the Public Service Commission regulates our electricity, gas, water, and telecoms in New York State. This means they are in charge of pricing and how our energy is generated. So the corporate utilities have to ask the PSC when they want to raise the prices on our energy bills or build new infrastructure. This process of asking for more money or development of infrastructure opens up a proceeding which is called a rate case. Right now in New York State, many corporate utilities are asking to expand fossil fuel infrastructure without considering renewable alternatives and make us the customers pay for it. Given our climate goals in New York State and climate goals globally to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, this makes no sense. This is big money wanting us to keep business as usual. Visit saneenergy.org backslash utilities to get active in keeping fossil fuels in the ground. Okay. Hey, everybody. Um, my name's Lee Zishi. I'm an organizer with Sane Energy Project. Um, so you just saw that video that kind of explains, you know, what a rate case is. Um, you know, they exist because our utilities are monopolies in New York. Um, and if they want to charge us for something, they have to apply to the Public Service Commission for it. Um, and so they have these proceedings and people can become intervent interveners to change the outcome. 
um, you can go to the next slide. So what, um, so what exactly is Con Edison um, proposing in their rate hike? Um, sorry, I'm just gonna let the- Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just having some technical difficulties here. Um, so Con Ed wants to charge us over um, $1.2 billion more um, and $500 million more um, for gas. So Con Edison is both um, gas um, utility in um, Manhattan, the Bronx, and parts of Queens, and they're electric for all of um, Brooklyn, um, Queens, Manhattan, um, Westchester, and the Bronx. Now the next slide. So for gas, um, Con Edison wants to spend almost um, $1 billion um, every year over the next three years um, on frack gas infrastructure. Uh, one of those projects is a fracked gas storage facility. Um, that's what LNG stands for, liquefied natural gas that they have in Astoria, Queens. Um, even though we know we need to be getting off of fossil fuels, Con Edison wants to dump um, over $70 million into this aging storage facility over the next five years. Go to the next slide. Um, they're also expanding a pipeline. Con Ed brings in their gas through Westchester, um, down through the Bronx, um, and then into Astoria. And there's a massive pipeline that goes through that whole area. And um, they are replacing an old 24 inch pipeline with a 36 inch pipeline. So it is a bigger pipeline. Um, and that's, you know, it's, it's a very, very, very expensive pipeline. Um, the pipeline itself and the tunnel to go over, under the Bronx River um, is over $200 million over the next three years. Um, they're also, um, Con Ed also um, is expanding a pipeline in Astoria um, and pipelines down in Long Island City. Um, they want to spend another $73.7 million, $73 million on that over the next three years. Um, a lot of times we'll say this is about reliability, things like that, but they're clearly taking smaller, older pipelines and expand and adding in new pipelines that are um, larger in size. And yeah, to go, like, we'll be going back over um, all these questions at the end. Um, so feel free to put them in the chat now so we can keep track of them, um, but we'll, we'll answer questions all at the end. Con Ed wants to spend also um, another $11 million on the um, Cortland, and I'll put this in quotes, Algonquin, because it's clearly very racist to be naming frack gas infrastructure after the indigenous people of this land. Um, a gate station is what, um, when there's different pipelines that come together, gate stations help keep the pressure, um, but they also emit a lot of emissions into the air. Um, so that's another $11 million on the gate station in Westchester. Go to the next slide. Con Ed has another one of these kind of gate station metering stations um, where their system becomes national grid system. Um, this is in Long Island City going under Newtown Creek into Greenpoint. Um, it's a very, a lot of Con Ed's infrastructure, like a lot of the infrastructure in New York City is very old. You know, it went in, um, you know, sometimes 50, 70 years ago. Um, so Con Ed wants to spend $30 million over the next three years replacing um, their Newtown Creek metering station. Go to the next slide. Con Ed also has an oil and gas um, power plant on the Lower East Side. They wanna spend about $67 million in upgrades to that facility. Um, including converting its backup fuel from number four, four oil to number two oil. Um, you know, all of these projects are creating local air pollution. All of these projects are not helping us align with our climate goals. Um, and in many times, including this plant and also the LNG plant, you know, Con Ed wants to spend a lot of money 
um, you know, reinforcing it against climate change, which is just, you know, so ironic um, and really adds, you know, insult to injury that these fracked gas, these fossil fuel projects um, that are creating climate change, Con Ed wants us to pay more money to help protect and extend the life of that infrastructure. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, Con Ed wants to also spend about $500 million every single year um, replacing leak prone pipe. Um, like I said, a lot of the pipeline in New York City is, is very, very old um, and they want to spend a ton of money um, replacing that. And so obviously we're against, you know, this pipeline leaking, um, but we're very, very concerned about Con Ed pretty much replacing their entire system um, with new pipeline because we know that's supposed to last for decades and we need to be getting off of gas to meet our climate goals. And Con Ed wants to spend about $75 million next year um, hooking up people, um, new people, new customers to gas. Um, and so this, if you think about it, this is, you know, this adds up to a lot of money, as we said, almost a billion dollars every single year, um, extending the life of Con Ed's frat gas delivery system. Go to the next slide. And who pays for that? Um, we pay for all of it. Um, Con Ed doesn't actually make money by delivering you gas or electricity. You know, they break even on those kind of things. It's called the supply. And how they actually make money is by building projects, whether that's a, a gas project or an electric project like transmission lines, um, and then getting a rate, a guaranteed rate of return on that, some profit for their investors and their corporation. Um, so, you know, we are all that money that you just saw, you know, $100 million for this, tens of million dollars for that, you know, that's all coming from us. We're paying for it and we'll be paying for this kind of things for, for decades. And so, you know, what's wrong with this? Um, I'm sure everybody here who has a Con Ed bill has seen the impacts of previous rate hikes on our bills and also this very high spike in gas supply cost. Um, you know, throughout, even before the pandemic, there was serious utility debt and that has only ballooned over the pandemic as people are really struggling to pay utility bills. Often our utility bills are our second highest bill um, after rent. Um, so right now, over 400,000 New York City and Westchester customers um, are in debt to Con Edison. Um, and the average person owes um, over $2,000. Um, so it's insane that Con Ed wants to raise rates when people cannot already afford it. Um, and at the same time that, you know, people are making these very tough decisions about what kind of bills they're going to pay um, or, you know, keeping their heat at the absolute minimum because they're afraid of high bills. The CEO of Con Ed has been raking in obscene profits. Um, you know, in 2020, his total compens compensation was $7.5 million. So, you know, Con Ed as a corporation in general is doing just fine and its CEOs and top employees um, are becoming obscenely wealthy while Con Ed customers are just struggling to, to pay their bills. Go to the next slide. And so, you know, we, um, you know, this summer we lost fellow New Yorkers who drowned in their own basements because of flooding that was fueled by climate change. Um, we're seeing just constant weather um, becoming more erratic. Um, and we know that also deadly heat waves every summer, you know, it's getting hotter. Um, we're seeing climate change right now. You know, we've been seeing climate change here in New York City for, for years, and we know it's only going to get worse. And, you know, Con Ed has claimed that this rate hike is, is different. Um, that it's not business as usual, but unfortunately, that's exactly what this is. Um, this is business as usual. This is the continuation of a lot of greenwashing of frac gas. Um, and, you know, Con Ed's proposal definitely 
expands the use of fossil fuel infrastructure for decades to come. Um, and that does not align with the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, which is the law that New York passed in 2019. You know, it was fought for um, by grassroots frontline BIPOC community members um, to lower greenhouse gas emissions and to protect environmental justice communities and nothing that Con Ed is proposing here actually aligns with the CLCPA. Um, you know, this plan is a, a climate disaster. Can go to the next slide. My computer's acting up a little bit, sorry. I need to just back up for one second if folks can Um, and yeah, and so like I said, you know, the part of the CLCPA is about protecting environmental justice communities. They're called disadvantaged communities in the, according to the CLCPA. Um, and, you know, not only does Con Ed's proposal expand infrastructure um, in communities that have been polluted by fossil fuels for decades, um, we also know just the entire model, right, of investor-owned utilities um, is racist. You know, it's so often black, brown, indigenous communities of color um, that are struggling to pay bills already um, because of our, you know, very racist system um, that also are seeing some of the worst air pollution. Gas is, is very bad for us in our own homes. Um, and so when we're also seeing brownouts and blackouts, the failures of Con Ed's electric system, that is also often so much happening um, in disadvantaged communities. Um, and so, yeah, this entire, this entire proposal perpetuates environmental racism um, and climate disaster. And I think now I'm passing it over to Kim to talk about some of the solutions and how to prep for the hearing. Yes, don't get down everybody. We have a good team here. I'm sorry my camera is not working. I don't, I don't know what's going on with my computer. Um, but uh, yeah, but we have um, solutions. So we know that a couple of the things that we want to demand when we go and speak to Con Edison and the Public Service Commission at these hearings is that we know that we have the solutions. We know that building public power as an alternative to this corporate utility model, and they're basically just corporations like any other corporation, except they get a guaranteed rate of return. Um, I don't know other corporations that have that luxury to be able to just have a guaranteed rate of return. Um, but they um, serve as sort of like the middlemen between us and our energy. And we know that if we can own our power, our own power as New Yorkers, that we can actually cut out the corporate model and actually save some money. And if we own our own energy, we would be making choices like we probably wouldn't be building fossil fuels because I certainly don't want to be poisoned by fossil fuels, nor do I want my neighbors poisoned by fossil fuels. Um, this is all financially feasible right now. We know that the New York Power Authority um, could build um, publicly owned renewable energy right now. We want to have democratic ownership and control over this. We don't want to be watching these CEOs raking in more money um, to deliver us energy that we need to be productive members of our society. Um, we know that publicly owned utilities looking at different models are um, about 14% cheaper than if we continue with the, with the models that, that Con Ed and National Grid are, um, are owning over us. Um, and we want to make sure that we can have a system where we actually have direct input on our visions and goals, um, where we can put, um, you know, peep, um, profit um, you know, um, where we don't have profit making more than, than the, you know, people. 
Um, we also know that we need to make real demands of Con Ed, um, and we also need to push the Public Service Commission, um, the ones that are going to be making this decision. Um, we know that we need to push them and say that we need um, Con Ed to spend our money on electrification and energy efficiency. We know that there are such barriers for low-income households and communities of color from accessing energy efficiency retrofits. Um, we know that we need um, not just to weatherize our homes, but make sure that mold, lead, and asbestos can be eliminated. Um, we know that um, this also needs to be subsidized or directly provided to disadvantaged New Yorkers. Lee mentioned earlier that they want us to pay to give free hookups to new gas customers, but we shouldn't be paying for that. Um, we should be investing our money in our communities, and a lot of that looks like building upgrades in energy efficiency. So we won't be using as much power. Um, so a couple of the things we wanna make sure to tell the Public Service Commission to reject the rate hike reject the expansion of fossil fuels and require Con Edison to build energy efficiency, electrification, and renewables without raising our rates. It's outrageous that they're even coming forward to ask for a rate hike right now when we're all struggling to pay our bills. A lot of us are in debt, um, as Lee was mentioning earlier. So we have public hearings coming up and getting our voices on the record is so important. So when we testify at public hearings, our voices are what influences the case. So we influence, the, so whoever shows up is, are the voices that are gonna be heard. We need to show up in real numbers and speaking out it is, is really an effective way to influence decision makers. And the more of us that show up, the more that the Public Service Commission is gonna actually pay attention. So it's really important that we show up. Um, we're gonna put in the chat the link that you can um, RSVP to these hearings. And um, so one, a couple of things that we would ask you to do is you know, write down on a piece of paper or type it up or even type it into your phone. Um, just put, you have usually like two to three minutes to speak. Um, and this is all online, so you can do it from your computer or your phone. Um, so you want to give an effective testimony on, you know, why you're against Con Edison rate hikes. And you're going to ask the Public Service Commission to deny their proposal. Um, that's the basics bottom line. Um, Usually, um, people, it's, it's good for you to begin by telling, telling them your name and, and where you live. Um, just be, you know, simple and straightforward. Um, if you have a personal um, story regarding energy debt, um, share it clearly and honestly. For them to know what's actually happening with real people um, is so important. Um, it's really important that they know that they need to shape the policy that is going to make your life better. Um, so definitely make sure to share, share who you are and why this affects you. Um, you can also um, reference talking points if you want to include some facts, if you don't want to speak too personally about yourself. Um, those will be in the chat. We have a, a really good talking points um, um, list that you can absolutely just speak from or weave into your personal story um, and and don't don't be nervous um, I remember the first time that I spoke at a public hearing I was so scared but with my you know allies and my friends and my colleagues all around me and I was watching them go up one by one and speak it just really helped me stand in my own power too. Um, all of our voices are so unique and so necessary for them to hear. And you know, we're gonna be live tweeting some of this stuff. We wanna really capture the essence of us people who don't wanna pay this corporation more money, especially more money that's asking to poison us with fossil fuel infrastructure. 
And the judges that um, they send these these folks called the administrative law judges who work for the Public Service Commission, they're just normal people um, doing their job. They're really used to doing public hearings. So a lot of times if you mess up and you need to start over, they're usually, you know, pretty cool to people. Um, I wouldn't, you know, there's, it's not like you're gonna be speaking to some like giant panel of scary looking people. Um, and especially since it's online, it's probably a little less, uh, you know, intimidating. Um, public hearings can sometimes feel that way. Um, but they're fun. And it's like, you know, when you start hearing everybody else's testimony, you know, we want to be almost cheerleaders for each other and be like, yeah, that's right. You tell them, you know. Um, so the, just some of the top line points that we want to make sure to get through in our public comments is, New York households can't afford a rate hike. You know, a lot of us are in debt right now. Um, we deserve real action from our government. You know, we pay for our government to do our administrative duties of living in the state of New York. They need to work for us. And make sure that, you know, we identify that Con Ed, their, their primary goal is, ter is, is obscene profits and obscene compensation for their executives. There is no reason why that guy should be walking home with eight million bucks last year where all of us are trying to figure out if we should be paying our rent, paying our electric bill, or turning down our heat in a, in a blizzard. You know, we know that we need to also stop fossil fuels we know that we have the law on our side that requires a reduction in admission in, in emissions from things like fossil fuels. So they can't continue to build this, you know, billions of dollars of fracked gas infrastructure. Um, and we know that the model of their business, this is just perpetuating racial injustice in our state. And, you know, it's 2021. It is time for us to move into the future, move on, and build a renewable future that is equitable and accountable to all of us. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen there so we can all see each other's beautiful faces. And we can open this up for questions and answers. Jasmine is going to facilitate us here. So if you have anything to ask, throw it in the chat. All right, I know we, we threw a lot at you there, um, but what is incredibly important as Kim made it very clear is to have your voice heard here. You know, we have an opportunity to make sure that the Public Service Commission who decides whether or not Con Ed can make all this money and they decide if Con Ed can increase the rates, you have an opportunity to make your voice heard and let them know we can't have any rate hikes and we definitely can't have rate hikes for fossil fuel infrastructure that's gonna pollute our communities. Um, and so I, I saw some uh, questions in the chat. There was a question a lot earlier about how weather impacts your rates. And I'd like to just briefly talk about that. Um, and, and then we'll go to some of the other questions, but weather impacts utility rates in a lot of ways. Um, our utility rates are especially affected because of our reliance on fossil fuels. So because we are reliant on fracked gas, right, what they call natural gas, but what we know is really just methane and is very bad for your health. Um, we rely on global markets that are volatile. Um, you know, the price goes up and down and we have to deal with that fluctuation. We're not protected, right? Uh, the price of fracked gas increases and decreases while solar is always free. Um, and so, you know, we know that a fossil fuel future is not consistent with one that has energy affordability. Um, when the weather, you know, in this past winter, the weather was a lot colder than anticipated. And so we, um, we well, there's a weather forecast. And so the utility knew and should have prepared. Um, but generally, we used a lot more fracked gas, uh, which increased the demand. Um, and helped to raise the prices. But there's a lot more to that. 
um, and I want to definitely stay a little bit on topic here, um, but just the point that I'm trying to get across is that we're subject to the fluctuations of the market. Um, and we are much more uh, subject to these dangerous fluctuations because of our dependency on fossil fuels, which the uh, corporate utilities are completely reliant on and want us to pay for. Um, and I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to pay to pollute my own community. Um, definitely not. So we definitely have some other questions around, um, will these slides be shared? Um, yes, they will. The recording will also be posted. Um, and someone asked if it's not Con Ed reps at the hearing, it's Public Service Commission reps, and that is correct. So this is a hearing in front of the Public Service Commission. And again, the Public Service Commission is the folks that oversee Con Ed. Right, so basically we're going to Con Ed's bosses and we're saying, uh, yeah, we're not okay with what Con Ed is, be, is preparing to do. Y'all need to step in. Um, and in the past hearings, we did see that there was representation from the chair of the Public Service Commission, so the top dog. Um, and so we may be able to actually you know, have a say. Um, so just as a reminder, the hearings are tomorrow at 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. and then also on Thursday at 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. So I know folks are putting in the chat the link tree where you can register for any of those upcoming events. We also put a how to testify document. We'll make sure that we keep doing that. Um, but I will say it is online on WebEx and it's tomorrow, right? So don't forget. <laughs> Um, and I, in particular, will be testifying at the 5 p.m. meeting. Um, all right, so what other questions do we have in here? Anything else we need to know or anything else we need for day of, just join the WebEx at the right time. So you do have to register um, in advance. And if you go to the link tree, someone will definitely drop it in again. We're gonna keep dropping the same link tree in. Um, but if you go to that link tree, you will see there's a link to register for the 1 p.m., a link to register for the 5 p.m., um, and same with the 1 p.m. and the 5 p.m. on Thursday. So you can just pick one uh, that works best for you and make sure you show up. Um, and New York City DSA will be on Thursday, 1 and 5, so that's great. Um, so definitely make sure that you're signed up. Get the word out to your friends. You know, this is one of those kind of unique opportunities where we're all affected, right? Sometimes we organize around a specific plant, right, in somebody's backyard, or, you know, we organize around a specific topic that's going to impact, you know, a specific borough or a specific neighborhood. But all of us are going to feel the pain if Con Ed is able to increase their electric rates by 11.2% and 18.2% on the gas side. And just as a reminder, this is different than the bill surge that we all saw a few weeks ago. This is on top of the increase in rates that we are already seeing. Um, and so it's really, really important that we stand up right now. And the great part is you can tell your friends, your family, your neighbors, hey, did you know that Con Ed wants to raise our rates 11%? while the CEO is making $750 million a year? Are you kidding me? And let me, let me just say, I think that uh, a few of your neighbors might say, where do I testify? <laughs> um, and for anyone who's camera shy, they can also do a written testimony. But of course, submitting your story, you know, verbally is, is really important. It really moves people. You know, um, I've been telling this often, but I spoke with a, a WE Act member who's $5,000 in debt, supplementing her heat with her gas stove, which is dangerous for, you know, your health. And she's pregnant and she has a baby under one year old in the home. Um, and that's, you know, that's just one of the stories. We saw in the chat that somebody's mom is behind by $17,000. These are not manageable holes that people can get out of. And if the utility doesn't take action, as Lee mentioned, guess who pays for all of that? We do. They socialize that cost back to us and we have to pay for the debt of everybody else 
because Con Ed keeps raising their rates. And another thing that Lee mentioned is that the return on equity, which is how much money Con Ed is allowed to make, they're asking for a higher return. So they're saying, not only should we raise rates, but we deserve to make more profit. And how much more profit? Hundreds of millions of dollars for their shareholders. While people are struggling, while there is over $1.6 billion of utility debt among over 1.1 million customers across New York State. So I know I'm, I'm adding a lot more fuel to the fire and maybe it's not super optimistic, um, but I felt like I needed to, to make that case. So uh, someone else asked, are there any other activities or movements other than the hearings? Um, and so I'll, I will stop talking and allow others to do so. I'll flip it to Kim and Lee. But before I do that, I will mention that tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. at City Hall, we will be having a press conference. Uh, we'll be joined by some council members. Um, I will be there. Kim and Lee will be there. Um, and we will be speaking about how outrageous this is and making sure that the press is aware that these hearings are happening so that more people can find out and testify. So if folks are available at 10 a.m. and you can get to City Hall, you can feel free to make your own homemade sign, you know, Con Ed wants to raise our rates or Con Ed is a con man, right? Uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever floats your boat, but feel free to come out and support um, because we are trying to get a lot of attention on this because no one deserves to have their rates increased you know, in the midst of a pandemic, a lot of people are trying to act like the pandemic is over, but the struggle is not over. Um, and so feel free to join us 10 a.m. at City Hall tomorrow. Um, Kim or Lee, would you like to talk about some other actions that we've got going on? Yeah, I just wanted to let folks know that we'll, we'll bring signs also to the press conference tomorrow and you can take them home and keep them because we will have a lot more public facing actions around this as the rate case moves ahead. And, you know, this summer, um, we're definitely going to want to call you back again to, you know, for another public hearing and to submit comments and to call your elected officials and, you know, to make sure that we really get loud about this because it is an absolute travesty. But the thing is, is we didn't, St. Energy just started getting active a couple of years ago in rate cases. And I've seen, you know, just in the last three years, an exponential amount of people getting really active in this space that has traditionally been very quiet, where they were able to make these decisions behind closed doors. And now that we know what they're doing, we can get involved and really build public um, awareness and public activity inside of these proceedings. And it's making them really nervous, and they should. And I really think that we're building power. And I'm feeling so good about this. I think that we have a really good shot of winning here. Um, I think things are really moving in our favor. And I think if we stick together, and you know, do all the actions and keep in touch with each other, I, I believe that we will win, I really do. Yeah, and I would um, just add to that, you know, we did mention public power um, and you know, the legislative session is only for the next two months. Um, it ends, you know, the beginning of June. So if you don't think that Con Ed, you know, if you want to make sure that we are the people that are owning the renewables that are being built, um, that's definitely something that there's going to be a lot of work on in the next two months. Um, and just want to like reiterate that, you know, in past rate cases, especially Con Ed's previous one that was actually approved in January 2020, you know, right before we all got slammed with the pandemic. New York State really did not do a good job fighting for us. You know, all the victories that Kim has talked about, you know, that all came from small groups like Sane Energy and Pulp and AARP. And, you know, we act this, everything that has been won has really been from communities leading the way. So it's really important, you know, what the stage we're at right now in this rate case is to be putting this on the state to do their damn job. Um, because we shouldn't have to be fighting like this. Um, so that is a huge, huge part of it. Um, and just 
um, you know, just so people understand how the layout kind of of these go, um, the, the judge will briefly explain the rate case. Um, elected officials then testify first. Um, and then what they did is they called people's names, gave people three minutes to speak. And if people for some reason were not on when they were first called, they were then given a chance to speak at the end. And then folks who did not register were given a chance to speak um, at the hearings last week. Um, so that's kind of how it all rolled out. Um, so just know elected officials will probably go first and then you'll get a chance to speak. And yeah, just being really you know, truthful about how this has impacted you. A lot of people talked about what a struggle it has been to pay their bills so far. And it was just incredibly powerful testimony. So at the end of the day, just know that you know your personal story and what you know is enough. And yeah, stand in your truth. And we're all really excited to, to hear you. And I like that so many people are putting um, in the chat what, what times they are, they're speaking. I see a question from Zach about the timeline of all of this, and um, it could go on. It's probably going to go on through the summertime. Um, after the public comments, um, people will start putting forth testimony who have registered to become um, interveners in the party. If any of you are really interested in getting in the weeds and becoming interveners um, in this rate case, um, you know, just let us know. Um, um, we can put our emails and telephone numbers in the chat, or you could just write in the chat now. Um, an intervener is somebody that files and says, um, you know, I yes, I am an I'm affected resident, or you know, I have expertise in this area, and I would like to participate in this proceeding in a deeper way than just giving public comment. So, you would be able to. Um, participate in negotiations, you would be able to put forth um, testimony, you would be able to ask discovery questions of the company um, or of any other intervener party in the case. Um, you know, it's a, it's a can get complicated, but um, hey, if you want to dive in, like there's definitely ways to be able to become active. But also if you're just like, you know, I got a super busy life and, you know, just like let me know when the next like comment period comes around or the next March or the next, you know, meeting, we will definitely let you have, uh, let you, let you know about that. Um, but that it can go on, you know, the last rate case that Lee and I were a part of went on, you know, and Lori here from Public Utility Law Project, you know, it went on for over two years. Um, but that was a very like um, special case. I think they mostly take maybe was it like nine months to a year or so? About eleven. Yeah. Yeah, about a year. Um. So yeah, if 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 you don't mind me adding here, so um, be, becoming an intervener is uh, definitely it's going to make your email very crazy. Um, you get a ton of emails um, and a ton of information, but what it allows you to do is participate in what we call the inside game, right? The outside game is what we're doing here. We're gathering the public to make comments. The inside game is actually, as Kim said, getting into the nitty gritty, right? So Con Ed posts all these documents and people are allowed to ask questions about it, what's called interrogatories, right? You're allowed to interrogate them um, and ask questions. You're allowed to uh, file expert testimonies and you're allowed to be a part of the negotiations. But as Kim said, all this happens behind closed doors. So it actually is confidential. And it gets to a point in the rate case where if you are not a party, then you are not privy to the information being shared. And so uh, we actually can't come on here and tell you guys what is happening in the rate case. Um, unless you're a party, it's confidential. So me and Kim could talk about it because we're both in the rate case, but we couldn't talk to someone else who's not a party. It is, from what I've heard, it is really crazy what is said behind closed doors. You know, I, I don't know more than that, <laughs> but except for the fact that you want to be behind those doors to hear what's going on. Um, and so in order to, I put in the chat where you can request party status. It's actually really simple. It's a very quick form. You put your name, 
your email. If you're participating, you check a box for yourself, or if you're participating on behalf of an organization, you can add that. Um, and then all of a sudden the emails start flowing. Uh, tons of information from all the different other parties, all the other interveners. Um, and so, yeah, Kim says that uh, she set up a special inbox for participating in rate cases so that all the information goes there. Um, so that, you know, is definitely one way to do it. But it allows you, like I said before, to be a part of the negotiations. So you can actually hear us arguing with Con Ed and saying, actually, we don't think that you should be able to get money for this project. And hey, you know, why are you uh, building more, uh, you know, why are you doing leak prone pipes when we need to electrify, right? Um, you know, why are you expanding here? Hey, you, you claim that you need money for this, but our analysis says that it's actually only worth this. Um, and so if you want to be privy to that, it is about a 10 or 11 month process, um, but it started at the end of January. So you're already two months down uh, and you can definitely register to be an intervener and just get access to you know, what happens behind closed doors because it is very undemocratic. Um, so the inclusion of folks, you know, everyday New Yorkers um, is really needed. Um, yeah, and uh, someone put, you can also choose to engage on whatever level you're up for. You don't need to scrutinize every document. And um, I will say you probably can't, <laughs> there are so many. Um, but, uh, you know, you can choose to just get involved in the parts that interest you. Um, and if you're in communication with other interveners like Kim or, or me or Lori from Pulp um, or Jean, uh, then, you know, you can ask us, hey, what, you know, what's a good day to show up? <laughs> you know, uh, I'd like to go to a meeting, uh, you know, what, 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 what is worth me going to? And we can say, hey, listen, we've got a really important, you know, negotiation happening on Wednesday. We'd love to get you there. Um, so again, a lot of information, but it, you know, it's an opportunity and an option. Um, are there any other questions? I think we're up to date on the ones in the chat, but please feel free and you can also unmute and just ask. You've got some, some Con Ed experts on the line, so take advantage. <laughs> All right, what are other strategies for getting communities informed about Con Ed? I'd love to turn that to the folks at Sane Energy because you all do so much on the ground organizing around this. Well, this is one way that we're doing it. We're hosting teach-ins and stuff. Uh, we do have the comment prompt that we put in the chat earlier. Um, you know, and you know, we'll most likely be you know hosting some you know postcard handouts, leafleting opportunities at, you know, bus stations or train stations or, you know, any farmer's markets. We usually hang out at farmer's markets. Um, a lot of times we'll have, you know, art bills if we're going to have a rally or a press conference coming up. Um, you know, it's important also for our elected officials in every level um, to know about this. So please call your representatives and let them know about this. You know, we would love to really connect the dots on all the fossil fuel infrastructure that is being expanded on our dime in New York City. So, you know, now that you're registered here, we'll make sure that we stay in touch with you when we have, you know, outings or, you know, meetings or anything like that. Thanks for the question. And also in that link tree that we've been sharing, um, the, the final link to that is a written comment prompt. And that's definitely, I think, the best thing to share with folks if you can, um, to say like, hey, have you had a high Con Ed bill? You should submit a written comment, you know, besides letting them know about this public hearings, you know, once the public hearings are over. Um, and once people submit a written comment, they'll then be also become on our list. So we'll keep them updated about all the different actions. Um, we've been fighting a pipeline in North Brooklyn that National Grid has been building and you know, have created materials. So I think too, if anyone is interested and lives in any of the communities where these projects 
um, are being proposed and want to do some community outreach, um, we could definitely help you create, you know, a flyer, that kind of thing, so you can can reach out to your neighbors. But yeah, I would say number one thing right now is sharing the information about the hearings coming up um, and then sharing that written comment prompt because that will give people a chance to say, you know, what they feel about this and get them involved in the bigger fight. Good evening, one. This is Bailey from WEAC for Environmental Justice. I'm the manager of membership at Organizing. If you're on this call, just remember when you're doing testimony, um, when you say make it personal, just say something simple. Hey, my bill went up $50. That $50 could have went to food, but I can't do that because my bill went up. Or you know what? I have to share that Metro card between me and my partner or me and my son. If you personalize it like that, that has impact. So I just wanna make sure that everybody understands that um, when you talk about personalizing, you know, whether it's the Metro card, whether it's food, or you may have to cut and paste. You know what? Some people get their cell phones cut off because you know what? They had to pay their Con Ed bill. Once you do that, then they start to listen. So just make sure you, you do that. You don't have to overthink it. Such a good point, Bailey. Um, I see Anshul has their hand raised. Uh, yes, I just had a quick question. Is is this the, the right forum to talk about the Gas Transition and Affordable Energy Act, which basically proposes to reform public service law to prevent Con Ed from doing what they're doing in this late case in the future? I think given that we only have a few minutes left, it might be a difficult one to bring up, but I think it's it's an important bill. Um, and for, for those of you who aren't aware yet, I'll say that one of the things that was brought up in the presentation is that we pay for the expansion of the gas lines. So if uh, a new building is, uh, is put up anywhere um, in the Con Ed territory, then they, uh, then someone can call the utility and say, I want gas and Con Ed will pay for the first 100 feet of that gas line. Um, guess what? When Con Ed pays for that, we pay for that. Um, and so even though fracked gas contributes to climate change and it pollutes our environment and it makes us sick, we as customers have to pay for anybody who decides that they want gas in their home. Even though new homes should be all electric and renewable energy powered, if anyone wants gas, we all have to pay for it. Um, and so Amber just put some, some great information in the chat about a bill that would reform that. And it would actually make sure that we don't have to pay for that expansion of the gas line. Um, <laughs> I see Jean is in the stack. Jean? Hey, thanks, Bailey. I actually wanted to reinforce what Bailey said about speaking personally. You don't have to be an expert about how they calculate your rates. You just have to talk about what it means for you. And one thing that came up in the first two of these six hearings a lot was customers being outraged about the quality of customer service that they got. And we didn't put that in the um, talking points, but we could because it really shows how this company just keeps taking our money but does not provide decent services. They pay no attention to the needs of the customers and of New Yorkers more generally. And some of the people who were most effective, I thought, was um, uh, especially seniors and others on fixed incomes talking about um, exactly what Bailey said, what it means when you can't pay it. And a couple of people, one man described himself shaking because he was so upset by this. And the, the, the fear that he was actually going to lose his home, that he had worked his whole life to pay the mortgage on because he could not afford his gas and electricity bills. Oh, and one other thing, if you're nervous, don't worry, it doesn't show. Like if you think people are gonna be like, oh my God, she's so awkward. No, you won't look nervous. So don't worry about it. I appreciate that, Jean. As someone who formerly hated public speaking, uh, it's always good to get the reminder. And of course, 
we're always far more concerned about ourselves than anyone else is, right? <laughs> Are there any other questions in this last minute that we have together? We have a lot of links. Uh, if someone can just drop the link tree one more time um, so that folks can click on it and make sure that uh, you register. Like I said, we'll be doing, uh, we'll be at the 5 p.m. Uh, hearing tomorrow. Um, and if folks are available, 10 a.m. City Hall tomorrow morning. Thank you all so much. Uh, we really appreciate you showing up, taking the time to learn, um, and of course, you know, participating in your own energy future. Um, it's not often that we have a say, so it's really, really incredible to see so many of you here today learning how to use your voice um, and to make sure that our rates don't go up. Because uh, I don't know about y'all, but I can't afford that. <laughs> so. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.